Okay, here's problem number one from the North Carolina Math 1 EOC from 2016. And I can see it's made up of two parts. There's the text part up here at the top, and then there's the answer choices, which uh, on your paper, you probably have your answer choices. You've got A and B on one page, and then you've got C, answer choices C and D on another page. I've just cut mine out so they'd all fit on a single page. So I'm going to be going back and forth between the text part and the answer choices part as I try to make sense of this problem. One of the first things I noticed, though, about this problem is that the answer choices are all uh, graphs of straight lines, which tells me that I'm going to be doing something with uh, equations of lines or linear functions so I can go ahead and start thinking in terms of linear functions. So, okay, let me go ahead and start reading my problem here. Jesse's bus ride to school is five minutes more than two-thirds the time of Robert's bus ride. Okay, I'm going to stop right there and just note that this sentence sounds like I'm going to, I'm going to be translating this from English into an equation. I'm going to be translating this into some type of algebraic expression. That's just kind of what it reads like. And since I already know my answer choices are all graphs of linear functions, then I'm guessing I'm probably going to be translating this into uh, a linear function or the equation of a straight line. Okay. Which graph shows the possible times of Jesse's and Robert's bus rides? Okay, so all of these graphs apparently show a relationship between Jesse's bus ride in minutes, so the length of Jesse's bus ride and the length of Robert's bus ride. They all have the same Jesse's bus ride on the y-axis, Robert's bus ride, Jesse on the y-axis, Robert's bus ride on the x-axis. So they all have that same uh, format. And since I know that uh, one way of writing a linear function is in this form y equals mx plus b, what we call the slope-intercept form, where this is the slope and this is the y-intercept, then I'm thinking that the equation that I'm going to try to write here when I translate this into uh, an algebraic equation, it, it might be helpful if it looks like this, because if I can get it in this form, then I can figure out which one of these answer choices matches my equation. Okay, so, all right, I have to translate this kind of confusing sentence into an equation, equation of a straight line. So I'm going to, the way I'm going to do this, I, I don't want to, I don't want to try to do this all at once. So I'm going to kind of chunk this sentence up into pieces. And so let's see, first off, I notice I've got, there's two numbers here, five and two thirds. They may be helpful. And I notice I've got, it says Jesse's bus ride to school is five minutes more than two thirds of the time of Robert's bus ride. That word is, I know, is kind of a useful uh, word when I'm trying to translate a sentence from English into algebraic notation, because is usually means equals. Jesse's bus ride to school equals five minutes more than two thirds of the time of Robert's bus ride. Okay, so I can make, make that my equal sign. And I'm gonna take Jesse's bus ride, I'm gonna kind of make, I'm gonna call that one, one chunk, and Robert's bus ride, I'm gonna call another chunk. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, kind of uh, try to make this a little bit simpler. I, I can tell I've got some, some stuff I have to add into my equation here, five minutes more than two-thirds of the time of, but I'm going to start just by writing Jesse's bus ride and Robert's bus ride. I'm going to say Jay's bus ride. Jesse's bus ride is five minutes more than two-thirds of the time of Robert's bus ride. And I'm just going to put R's bus ride I'm going to just start with this. And this would be a pretty simple equation if that was all I had to write. Jesse's bus ride equals Robert's bus ride. That would tell me that they had th their bus rides were exactly the same length of time. And I know that's not the case, but this is just a, a place for me to start. So I've kind of got the start of an equation here. Now I've got these other pieces that I need to put in. So I've got my is in there already. There's my equal sign. Jesse's bus ride to school Jesse's bus ride to school, that's what this part means. So I'm actually, I'm not really even using this part here. So Jesse's bus ride is five minutes more than 
Let me kind of separate that part out. Let me call that one chunk. Five minutes more than two-thirds the time of Robert's bus ride. Okay, so here are my different pieces here, my different chunks. So Jesse's bus ride is five minutes more than or five minutes longer than I'm, I'm going to leave this part out for now. I'm just going to focus on this five minutes longer because this part I think I can do. If Jesse's bus ride is five minutes longer than Robert's bus ride, then in order to make them equal, I'm going to have to add five minutes onto one side of the equation. And which one? Well, if Jesse's bus ride is longer than Robert's, Jesse's bus ride is longer than Robert's, then I would have to add something onto the length of Robert's bus ride in order to make it equal to Jesse's. So, five minutes longer. So if I add five minutes onto Robert's shorter bus ride, then that makes it equal to Jesse's longer bus ride. Now, I realize this isn't, you know, technically, it's not 100% correct yet because I've ignored this whole two-thirds part. But I'm, I'm going I'm to get to that in just a minute. So right now, my equation says Jesse's bus ride is five minutes longer than Robert's bus ride. Okay, so far so good. Let me see if I can do something with this two-thirds the time of. Two-thirds the time of Robert's bus ride. And I remember that this of, when I read this in a math problem, very often, two-thirds of something, that of means multiply. So two-thirds of Robert's bus ride, that means two-thirds times Robert's bus ride. Okay, so let's put that in our algebraic equation here. Two-thirds times Robert's bus ride. So now my equation says Jesse's bus ride equals two-thirds times Robert's bus ride plus five, which is the same as this one. I've just got this in a slightly different order here. Jesse's bus ride is five minutes longer than two-thirds the time of Robert's bus ride. Okay, so now I've got my equation here, and in fact, I can make it look a little bit more like this by noting that Jesse's bus ride is my y axis, that's my y variable, and Robert's bus ride is my independent variable or my x variable, so let me just substitute those in here. Instead of Jesse's bus ride, I'll just call that y. y equals two-thirds, and instead of Robert's bus ride, I'm going to substitute my x variable in for that, so two-thirds times Robert's bus ride plus five, and now I have the equation of a straight line in slope intercept form, now all I need to do is figure out which of my four answer choices matches this equation. Well, I know that the plus five part, that's my y-intercept, and so let me start by seeing if any of my answer choices have a y-intercept of five. So answer choice A does not have a y-intercept of five, so I can ignore that one. Answer choice B, B does have a y-intercept of five, Answer choice C. Answer choice C also has a y-intercept of 5. And answer choice D does not. So I can ignore answer choice D. So my correct answer must either be answer choice B or answer choice C. And apparently it's going to depend on which one of them has a slope of 2 thirds. And I could probably do some counting of squares here and figure out which one has a slope of two-thirds, but here's another way that I could do it. I noticed that answer choice B, this slope is a little bit flatter than answer, the slope of answer choice C, which is a little bit steeper, and two-thirds, I know, is a slope less than one, and a slope of one would be a slope that has a perfect 45-degree angle, and so I can see that answer choice C, my slope is greater than a slope of 1. So this slope right here is greater than 1. This slope right here, however, is less than 1. This must be my slope of 2 thirds. So I know my answer choice must be B. So now that we've figured out which of the answer choices is correct, now let's take a look at the different problem-solving strategies that we used and let's take a look at those in part two.